coming up, bad roads. Potholes are causing a mess on DC streets. What's being done to fill up the holes? We've got the full report straight ahead. And taking a smart trip? The new plan that could make it easier for students to ride the metro. Good evening, I'm Lauren Bernhardt. And I'm Nehemi Jackson Brown. The snow may be over, but D.C. residents are still feeling the aftermath as they drive through the city. Potholes are everywhere on main roads, and they're making commutes dangerous for workers in the D.C. area. Erica Crable has more on the story. No storm. D.C. is left with a collection of cracks and deep holes in the roads. Drivers try to avoid hitting them, but aren't always so lucky. The 4200 block of Massachusetts Avenue in Northwest is riddled with potholes. The holes formed when snow froze in existing cracks. As the water froze, it expanded and broke open the pavement. Plows scraping the roads also contributed to breaking open those cracks. If you hit a pothole, you could do serious damage to your tire and suspension. Some D.C. residents are wondering when the city will get around to fixing the potholes. You know, it's crazy because, you know, they've always been kind of bad, but after the storm, you know, they're just getting worse and, you know, traffic is already bad enough, you know, no one wants to deal with that and now we've got these potholes, you know, blowing out the tire in my car and, you know, I need to deal with that, you know, so I really wish that, you know, the city would do something about it, you know, get call up Mayor Fenty and be like, hey, fix the potholes or fix my tire. American University has its share of potholes and has already begun patching them at entrances along northwestern streets, but the D.C. government isn't reacting as quickly. D.C. has already maxed out their $6.5 million budget twice over, salting the roads and removing snow. Some district residents fear there isn't enough money to fix the potholes. Snowplows have already done their part after snowmageddon. D.C. residents are now waiting on pothole repair machines to fill in the gap. For District Wire News, I'm Erica Crable. You will need 10 cents more for your metro ride starting February 28th. The hike in prices is supposed to help Metro get rid of its $189 million deficit. This spring, more fare changes and other actions related to Metro's budget are expected. Although all prices are up, if you use a Metro Pass on the bus, it will still be 10 cents cheaper than a cash fare. American University students use their ID cards for checking out books, making purchases, and entering the dorms. Soon, Metro travel could be added to that list. Savannah Grable has the story. A group of 12 students have been selected to try out a new hybrid card with Metro capability. The card combines the student ID card and Smart Trip card into one, making Metro travel easy and quick. AU Student Government President Andy McCracken discussed the idea for the combo card with AU administration members over the summer. So as it looks exactly like the AU ID, and um, the only way that you would tell that it has the, the Metro thing is the little smart trip registration on the back and you can actually in certain light see the the actual chip in there um, but other than that it works exactly the same as, as your AUID and you can you just happen to be able to swipe into the metro with it if the pilot program goes well students could have their hands on these cards as early as the fall semester for district wire news I'm Savannah Graybill are you tired of credit card bills and fees you don't understand well, today's reforms for the Credit Card Accountability, Responsibility, and Disclosure Act go into effect. Credit card companies will now have to tell you before they increase your rates. In the first year that you sign up for a new card, your rates will not go up. Also, late fees and over-limit fees will be watched closely. So if you are responsible with your credit card, you could be receiving a break. President Barack Obama is bringing a new approach to the health care plan. The plan is being released only days before the bipartisan health care summit. This plan has outlined a way to provide coverage for 31 million Americans. It will cost $1 trillion over the next 10 years. There is no public option in this plan, and how Congress will vote is uncertain. American University has officially started its first Body Image Awareness Week. Faculty, staff, students, and community members are all taking part in this week of events. The week started off yesterday as walkers told passerbys they loved their bodies. I love my body. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, I do. I really love my body. Walking down that avenue. American University kicked off National Eating Disorder Awareness Week with a 3.6 mile walk on Sunday. 
around 70 people came out for the walk to raise awareness of eating disorders and to support local eating disorders nonprofit organizations. I think it's um, an issue that's very misrepresented and it doesn't get enough attention that it deserves. And um, I'm here to just be one more person to uh, make it a little louder. The walk and other events, including a documentary showing and a fashion show, are all meant to raise student awareness about body image problems. This is especially important because many people on AU's campus know someone who has suffered from an eating disorder. And it's something that I'm very passionate about, so I really want to do everything I can to increase awareness for this, for this issue. Carla Brun is participating in the events all week because of her mom and sister's struggles with eating disorders. Others are participating simply because it is a cause they believe in. Eating disorder awareness and activism is very close to my heart. The week is sponsored by groups like the Wellness Center, Women's Initiative, and the Freed Foundation. Kathleen McDonald, the Outreach Coordinator for the Freed Foundation, spoke to kick off this Body Image Awareness Week. AU's Body Image Awareness Week runs through February 27th. The next event of the week is a screening of the award-winning documentary, America the Beautiful. The film starts at 8.15 in Ward 2 and tells of people's obsession with beauty in America. Why are America's youth attending a conservative political conference? Michael Ono has the story. It's like a comic book convention for young conservatives. Everyone here at CPAC 2010 is excited to be a Republican. But I've been coming to CPAC since 2004. Um, it's my sixth CPAC this year, and it just gets bigger every time, and it's more exciting to see lots of young people. She's not alone. 48% of registrants were students, according to the latest straw poll. For some, ideology drives them to the convention. Um, now that the Democrats, the liberals, have taken over Congress and are pushing their agenda, I think a lot of people are not happy with the way things are going, and young people have an opportunity to shape this movement and drive this movement and hopefully make for a better future. Well, you know, CPAC is usually pretty, some stodgy, old, out of touch Republicans, I get that. But, you know, you're seeing the bloggers lounge, you're starting to see some younger people take interest. I think especially as they know, you know, they're going to be inheriting this debt, uh, younger people are, are, are starting to wake up a little bit and want to take a more active role on both sides. College students getting ready to graduate are looking for jobs at CPAC. Every student here is looking for a job of some kind, I think, um, whether that's in politics or in the private sector. And I think politics allows students to network and be able to meet people. There are other motivating factors. Um, part of it is that it is so inexpensive for students to come to CPAC. Ultimately, young people are just investing in their future. And yet the best that Washington, D.C. can do is say, go become someone's intern, and then a staff assistant, and then an associate press director. And then if we give you permission, someday we might let you make a decision about something. We're here to say right now, at this very moment, at this CPAC, this generation doesn't have to wait in line anymore. Reporting from CPAC in Washington, this is Michael Ono, District Wire News. After the break, the Chinese New Year. It's the Year of the Tiger. We'll show you the parade from Chinatown. In a diner in D.C. where patrons are treated to some unconventional entertainment. <laughs> 